Hey guys, in this video, I am checking out a pre-production lens sent to me by Camlan. This is the Camlan 50mm f1.1, which is a lens that I reviewed about a year or two ago. Uh, this is Mark II though, version two. So let's see how it comes packaged. So here is the box that this lens comes in, Camlan branded silver box, which is pretty typical of their lenses. 50 millimeter F1.1 Mark II, and this is 4E. So the first thing you get is a microfiber cloth, some silica gel, and really nice foam packaging. Here's the lens, it's not wrapped. It's just in there. There's no other materials, no other paperwork at all. It feels like it's very well built. Around the front, there is a lens hood that's already mounted. It does come off. It's a screw on type, which is not very typical, but it is metal and it does have some ridges on the inside. Front lens cap opens up just plastic and look at that front lens element. Amazing. Looks great. You can see all of the reflections, a lot of purples and yellows and pinks. So 62 millimeter filter thread, Camlan, and then 50 millimeter f1.1, and then that two, the second version. Around the back, no electronic connections here. This is manual only. Aperture control is at the bottom or closest to the camera body. It goes from f16 all the way to f1.1 and then the focus ring is towards the front which is where it should be that is just about perfect it's not super light like a lot of uh, rokinon manual lenses and it's not super stiff like some of the recent lenses that i've tested so very nice you can see that the barrel does extend quite a bit as you're moving focus and then the range is almost a full 180. It feels like a very well-built lens and it's pretty compact for a 50 millimeter f1.1. It feels like it's all metal in there. There's no piece of plastic on there at all. And as you would expect, that yellow ring, which is just so unique to Camlan, um, they really do make some amazing lenses for Sony. So excited to put this on the camera. Let's do that and see what we get. Here is the lens mounted on my A6000. This is with the lens hood included. If I remove this all metal lens hood, that is what the lens looks like. That front piece of glass looks very large. Overall, it is a heavy lens, but it's not overly so, at least not in comparison to some of the recent lenses that I've reviewed on this channel. Uh, it does make the camera setup a little bit more front heavy, but it's fairly well balanced um, because it's a little bit of a shorter lens. Now, what's interesting to me is when you compare what this lens looks like, the Mark II version to the Mark I version, I'll put up a video here right now, you can see just how much larger and how much better built this Mark II is in comparison to the Mark I. In fact, the first version of this 50 millimeter f1.1 lens from Camlan only had five elements in five groups. The new Mark II version has eight elements in seven groups. Uh, so quite a bit more glass, quite a bit more metal it seems like. So the result is a lens that feels much better built and more premium than the predecessor. So obviously the lens hood goes on just like that and you'll see that there are threads on the very end of this lens hood itself. So if you wanted to use a UV or other polarizing filter, you could do that. With the lens hood, it is a 72 millimeter filter thread. Without, it is a 62 millimeter filter thread. So you can decide what size filter you want to use on this lens. All right, so let's take a look at some sample photos and a couple of videos using this lens. And half of these shots were done on my A6400, the other half were done on my A6500. So here we go.
So that is it for the sample photos and videos. And I have to say that this lens is a very noticeable improvement over the first version. In fact, I wouldn't even call it an improvement. I would not even call it Mark II. I would call this a brand new lens because there is very little with this lens that reminds me of that first version of the Camlin 50 f1.1. Now that lens was good because it offered very creamy bokeh, a lot of bokeh for your money, but it was never exactly sharp, wasn't a tack sharp instrument. It was more just a fun lens to throw in your camera bag if you wanted to play around with a very shallow depth of field and whole loads of bokeh. This on the other hand is now a very serious contender as far as a very good portrait lens for your Sony E-mount. Optically this lens was very impressive. I tried to shoot as many shots as I could wide open at f1.1 because I think it really reveals how good a lens is when you shoot it wide open. And surprisingly, this was pretty sharp actually. It gets really sharp in the center at about f2.8, but all of the shots that I did shoot wide open were still usable, and I cannot say that about the first version of this lens. Now, using the focus ring was just amazing. I think this is one of the best damped focus rings that I've ever tried. It's really, really good. The range is perfect. The barrel does extend as you turn, but it does not get in the way. There are no dead spots. There are no dead zones. So it's not like you're moving from one end to the other side and you're waiting for the lens element to move. It's just very direct and very precise. There's a perfect amount of range, I think. And even though it's f1.1 and a super shallow depth of field, I found that focusing this lens was easier than a lot of wider lenses that were at f2 or f1.8 even. As far as the aperture ring, some may complain that it is a bit too stiff, but I kind of prefer it this way because if I have my eye up to the viewfinder and I'm just trying to figure out which one of these rings is the focus ring, I can easily tell that the focus ring is significantly lighter and that's the one I should be spinning versus the stiff aperture ring that I don't really need to touch in most cases. So now let's talk about bokeh and it is very abundant with this lens. Now if you want to take a lens and use it for portraits and you don't want anyone to know where the photos were taken, this is definitely a good lens to consider because it just blows out the background completely and it just looks like one smear, which is awesome. Camlens states that they have added some elements and expanded some elements, made the glass larger to eliminate a lot of the onion ring bokeh effect that the previous version of this lens had. The creaminess of the bokeh with this lens rivals even some Sigma lenses, so they did a really good job there. So let's talk about distortion, chromatic aberration, and flaring with this lens. First of all, distortion. There is very little to no distortion with this 50 millimeter f1.0 one surprisingly so the focal plane is nice and flat which is a very good thing as far as chromatic aberration there was a bit of it noticeable wide open as you would expect but I was surprised that there wasn't more of it because the first version of this lens had a lot of chromatic aberration and I've seen much much worse from much slower lenses so f1.1 yes there's a bit of it if you're shooting into a high contrast area but uh, as you stop it down, it seems to go away almost completely. And last but not least, flaring. Now, flaring is usually a negative when it comes to lenses, but I have to say that the flaring with this lens is really cinematic and really artsy and really cool. Uh, now, you guys probably saw that opening sequence where I was shooting into the sunlight with some trees. That is just the effect that you keep getting. Now this front lens element is really nice. It's very large and I think that is to blame. They obviously have some sort of coatings on it. Um, and so the effect that it creates is, like I said, cinematic and very nice. I don't think the flaring is a detriment to this lens whatsoever. I want to circle back around to sharpness with this lens. Now when I say it is decently sharp, even wide open, I don't mean it is razor sharp like the Sigma 56 f1.4. That portrait lens is virtually unbeatable. Nothing that I've tested really comes close. In fact, here's a side-by-side -side with this Camlan 50mm f1.1 
versus the Sigma 56 f1.4. So I stopped down the Camland 50 to f1.4 and I shot the Sigma wide open at f1.4. This is the result. You can see that there is quite a drastic difference there. The Sigma is still very, very much sharper. Here's another image. And even though the Camlan is very close, at least in the center, it looks very good. The contrast, the colors, and the overall sharpness are still better on the Sigma 56. Now, I show you that just so that you can tailor kind of your expectations when it comes to this lens. It's not a razor lens. It's not gonna beat a Sigma. For a budget lens, this is one of the best portrait lenses you can buy. I would say that it is sharper than even Sony's 50 millimeter f1.8. Prior to the release of this lens, my favorite manual portrait lens was the Seven Artisans 55 millimeter f1.4, which is a $120 lens. This lens from Camlan is better than that one, pretty noticeably in build quality, in the way that the focus ring feels optically and in bokeh. So I would definitely recommend this lens over that one. And I just got an email from Camlan confirming this, but they are doing a Kickstarter for this lens, similar to what they did with the 28 millimeter. Um, the early bird prices for the Kickstarter, which is gonna start the first week of June, is $169. Um, $169 is an amazing, amazing value for what you get with this very nice portrait lens. Um, it's hard to beat. Honestly, I can't think of any other lens for $169 that would perform better than this. If you're looking for the top of the line ultimate portrait lens, Sigma 56 1.4 is still my vote. But if you are on a tighter budget and you don't want to spend $400 on that lens, at 169, you really cannot beat the performance of the Camlan 50 f1.1. So very impressive, very excited for this lens to launch uh, early next month. And so I will post a link down below to their Kickstarter if it's live yet, I don't think it is, but check back to this video um, a couple weeks from today. And once the Kickstarter is live, I'll update the link so that you guys can go and join the Kickstarter to purchase your own copy of this if you so desire. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks so much for all of your likes, comments, and support. Let me know what you guys think of this lens down in the comments below. Stay tuned for more and have a nice day. Bye-bye.